This podcast was sponsored by King James and the Twelve Disciples. Just kidding. However, I do have COVID at the time of this recording, so if you think my voice sounds weird, I don't want to hear about it. Okay, bye. Ladies, gents, and all other friends, welcome to Growing Up Fundy, which is a new podcast hosted by yours truly, where we're going to examine the experiences of real people telling their real stories about how they grew up in either fundamentalist, orthodox, or other strictly religious environments. We're going to talk to people about how it impacted them, what they remember, what their experience was like. Are they positively impacted by their experiences and their strict religious upbringing? Are they negatively impacted to this day by that same upbringing? Have they upheld any of the beliefs or the rules that they learned through their religion or through their teaching and their doctrine? Or have they completely and totally changed sides? Maybe they're part of a different religion entirely. Maybe they're not religious at all. Maybe they're agnostic or atheist. That's basically going to be the center point of this podcast. I want to make sure that it's clear, though, that this podcast is going to be a very respectful examination of people's religious experiences. This is not a religion bashing podcast. This is not a making fun of religion podcast. It's important to me that we seek to understand the impact that very strict religions have on us both as children and into adulthood and how this may or may not facilitate behaviors and thoughts and wishes, drives, dreams that we all have. And you know, that sort of thing. My name is Sydney Davis. I'm a professional storyteller and comedian out of Nashville, Tennessee. I am formerly the host of Stories from the Beat Lounge at the Second City. I'm also the former host of Stories on Stage, which was at the Comedy Bar while Comedy Bar was here in Nashville, Tennessee. I was also the host of Nashville Stories, which ran here in Nashville at Third Coast Comedy Club. I'm also the host of a podcast called I Swear This Really Happened, which is a true story storytelling podcast where, very similar to this one, real people tell real stories from their real lives, and it's a lot of fun. But this podcast, I want to be a little bit different. While the remainder of my life is comedy focused, I want to make sure that this podcast stays very, I want it to be a learning experience. If the people we interview choose to make fun of their religion or make fun of the upbringing they had or make fun of some of the memories they have, that's entirely up to them. And I absolutely welcome that. But I also want to go into this podcast with the ability to separate people and their beliefs and their ideas and just kind of listen and learn and take notes because why not? I feel like we could all learn a little bit from each other and you might find out that you have a lot more in common with people than you thought. Who knows? I personally was not raised fundamentalist Christian. I was raised Baptist Christian. We had things like Veggie Tales and Awanas. Nobody else seems to know what I'm talking about when I talk about Awanas. I have never met another adult other than people who went to church with me as a kid who know what Awanas is. For those of you who don't know, Awanas is basically Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, but for church. So you have the best, you earn badges, you do assignments, you have a little booklet with things that you're supposed to accomplish every week and then you come back to church on Wednesday night and you uh, recite Bible verses or whatever the challenge happens to be during the next batch. Nobody else seems to know what I'm talking about when I talk about that. So if you had Awanas or if you did Awanas, let me know in the comments of whatever platform you're watching this on. One thing that I remember the most about Awanas is I would only ever quote John 3 16 every single solitary week when we were supposed to go to the youth group leader and read whatever that week's verse was in order to earn our badge because the verses would get longer and longer and then the next thing you know you're supposed to recite like 10 or 11 verses in order to earn your badge depending on what level it was i would never do the homework i would never do the memorization of any kind i didn't you know i i was in school already i didn't want homework for church too that wasn't what i was into um so my resolution was to quote John 3, 16 every single week, no matter what the assignment was. For those of you unfamiliar with what John 3, 16 is out of the Christian Bible, the verse goes, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and who shall ever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that's kind of a famous verse for Christians, especially for Baptists, as I'm sure it's I'm sure it's famous for all other sects of Christianity too, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. That's what this podcast is for, to learn that. But I remember every single week my youth pastor would say, you know, would call each kid's name to come up and recite their verse and earn their badge or not earn their badge. If you messed up, you didn't get your badge and you had to try, spend another week trying. And every week I would go up to him and every week he would say, please don't recite John three sixteen. And then he would say, are you sure you're memorized and ready to go? And I would say, yes. And he goes, and you're not going to quote John three sixteen. And I would say, no. And he would say, all right, let's hear it. And I would just say, for God so loved the world. And then he would kick me out. Just kidding. He wouldn't kick me out, but he would tell me to go sit down. I never earned a single badge. I don't even think I earned enough points to ever get the vest. I don't really remember. But I absolutely did not earn the badge at all. One of the reasons I wanted to start a podcast about fundamentalists is because I recently kind of had some memories pop up that I hadn't thought about in a while. I, interestingly enough, grew up with and went to church with the Duggars from 15 or I guess, I mean, it started like 19 kids and counting and then it became 20 kids and counting. It might have made it to 21. I don't even remember. But we went to the same church when I was a little kid. And then we also had the same piano teacher, not at the same time. We met with her independently, but for our piano recitals, we would meet in the same place at the same day and and perform our pieces. And I remember we would also see them every week at this place called AQ Chicken House in Springdale, Arkansas, where in the 90s, it was either on Tuesday or Wednesday nights, kids ate for 25 cents. So of course they went there because they had like 10 kids. You know, there were two of us, me and my brother. Two meals cost my mom 50 cents. But when you have 10 kids like that, they did at the time. Of course they were always there. And so I remember Josh Duggar, the oldest one, was the same age as my brother. And so they would play and I would play with the oldest girls. But um, they've been on my mind a lot lately because, you know, obviously, um, or maybe not obviously, for those of you who don't know, Josh Duggar just this week was convicted of possession of child pornography and a whole bunch of other lewd things. And he is going to prison for a very long time, uh, deservedly so. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, they've just kind of been on my mind because I, I just remember what they were like as little kids in the 90s, you know, 9, 10, 11, 13 years old. And you just you never see things coming to this. You know, you never see people becoming that way when they're kids. And I started telling my current boyfriend, Vince, about them and about the religion that I grew up with when I was a kid. And he did not grow up religious at all. He did not have any kind of religious experience. So I started to tell him some of the things about very specifically the Baptist Christian faith and the Christian faith. And he was shocked. He was shook. He couldn't believe some of the details I was telling him. Like, for example, the rapture. When I told him about what the rapture was, I don't think he believed that there were human beings out there that actually believed in the rapture. He was shocked because I think it probably sounds like one of the scariest things he's ever heard of in his life. And um, yeah, so I explained to him what the rapture was. I've uh, given him the lyrics of some uh, hymns. I have given him kind of the, the fundamental basics on, you know, what Christians believe and what church is like and what church was like growing up and uh, Awanas. I explained Awanas to him. And when I saw just how shocked and surprised he was by a lot of things that I thought were just absolutely common in everyday experiences of a Southern Baptist woman and a Baptist woman and a Christian woman, I started to wonder if there was anything about other religions that I didn't know that I would be absolutely shook to find out. And then I started to think if he didn't know that about Baptist Christians or Christians in general, who else doesn't know that? And who else would also be really surprised to find out some of the things that they would find out, say, through a podcast like this? And so... I reached out on Facebook and I made a post that said, you know, did you grow up Orthodox? Did you grow up fundamentalist? Did you grow up very strictly Christian or maybe in a pseudo cult or an actual cult? If you did and you see this post, please reach out to me. I would love to have you as a guest on my podcast. And the response was astronomical. Astronomical. I probably lost count at 30, 40 people who 
instantly, like that day, reached out to me to tell me about their experiences growing up in their religious faith. But I had people reach out to me who had Judaism history, you know, and background. I learned about something called, oh, what, what did they call it? There's there's new kind of Christianity that I've learned about because multiple people reached out to me. Charismatic, uh, charismatic Christian. I had no idea that was a thing. Multiple charismatic Christians reached out to me. I've had some people who practice Islam reach out. I've had people, or used to anyway. I've had Pentecostal people. I've had Pentecostal light people, which was a new thing I learned about. Uh, quiverful individuals. So there's a lot. It turns out there's a lot of people who have experienced a lot of religions and have a lot of opinions about it. Some of them are going to be very positive. I know a lot of the people who reached out to me are still very religious and they they want to talk about it. And a couple of them specified that they would like to keep things respectful. They don't want to be made fun of. And I completely respect that. Um, and some of these people are absolutely not religious at all. And they kind of just want to get off their chest what their experience was like. And I think this is a very interesting topic and I can't wait to kind of dive in and share with you some people from my life who I know very well and I care a lot about and also total strangers who reached out to me when the, the my post was shared and I think we could all learn a lot. I think we could learn a lot about tolerance. I think we could learn a lot about different experiences we didn't know existed and I think we could learn a lot about fun things like certain uh I don't know, Christmas traditions or things that certain religions do with candles or what certain necklaces mean or different things like that that we didn't know before and we can all just have a good time. The most important thing is to have a good time. I think. You know, I thought it was really interesting, though, kind of bringing it back to the Duggars. I posted on a subreddit a little while ago, this is a few months ago, that was specific to fundamentalists. It's a it's a group on Reddit that kind of follow very famous fundamentalist families because it turns out there's a lot of them. Didn't know that until I joined the subreddit. And they were talking about the Duggars because again the Duggars have been in the news a lot lately. And I posted on there that I knew the Duggars and I'd grown up with them as a kid. And I, you know, if people were curious about certain things that we did or what life was like to ask me anything, I posted an AMA. And so people were asking me questions. You know, I told them about the church that we went to uh, in Springdale. Um, I named it. You know, I, I told them about AQ Chicken House, how we always went there that certain night of the week and ate for 25 cents. I told them just different stories and, and anecdotes that I remembered about the Duggars. And I got removed. I got banned from the group because according to the moderator, everything that I was saying could easily be Googled. They didn't believe that I actually knew the Duggars and everything that I was saying could, in their words, be very easily Googled. And they didn't trust that I was real and I was making it all up. And my question for them was, wait, so every single solitary thing I've said, from the church we went to, to times and dates and timelines and the restaurant that exists still, or at least the building does, the piano teacher that we had, all of this stuff is verifiable as true. So you're kicking me out because you think I'm a liar. <laughs> Thought that was odd. Okay. I don't know, other than continuing to tell you true stories with actual locations, dates, and names, I don't know how else to prove that I'm telling the truth. I'm still confused about that. It still disturbs me to this day. You know, I've been banned from subreddits before, but never for telling the truth to the point where it can be verified online. I don't know. It was weird. It didn't set with me well. But I think what really happened there was they wanted me to say mean stuff about the Duggars, and I wasn't saying mean stuff. They wanted me to say, like, oh my god, yes, I knew he was a child molester. He was so creepy. He was so weird. They were so... But honestly, they weren't. They weren't. They were, at the time, pretty regular people. This was before the television show, and their dad was... I remember he was running... Uh, I don't remember exactly what position he was running for, but he was a politician, and he was running for some office in Arkansas, and at the time, he owned a car dealership. And, like, again facts and evidence from what I remember that can be Googled, but I guess so Googleable that that makes me a liar. Anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, um, check back. We're going to have some episodes coming up and I'm really excited to see where this goes and I'm really excited to see the conversation that this sparks. And um, with that, I'm going to go. All right, bye.